Hello everyone, it's Tuesday today and today we have a very special video for you because today I'll be interviewing the Fallout London lead, Prilladog. How are you doing? Hi Tuesday, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. How are you doing? I hear you uh, have the spicy air, you have COVID. Yes, I am indeed. Uh, I've tested positive for the COVID. So yeah, uh, like, yeah. if I appear like silent for one of the bits, like you're finishing talking and then suddenly you don't hear anything for me, it's probably because I've muted myself to blow my nose. So <laughs> just a heads up. <laughs> well, um, I hope uh, you get better soon, mate. Yeah, it's, it's already going a bit better than uh, yesterday. So good, good, at least good. that's nice. But yeah, you're the Fallout London lead and uh, a pretty big project well, one of the biggest projects that's being worked on uh, as to date and uh, yeah I think it's going rather well with it I should you? hope so yeah yeah um, yeah I mean I would still say that we are one of the smaller out of the uh, hashtag big boy mods out there but um, yeah things have been picking up recently I mean I'm sure you've seen we've uh, had a couple of interviews now um, we're sort of gearing up to doing some more uh, public relations work. But yes, things have been uh, going very, very smooth recently. Yeah, I think th things are picking up, like people are joining the server. Uh, like you said, interviews are being held. Also, uh, just like you've had a consistent, um, how do you say, like you've uploaded pictures of the world space and all that quite consistently for quite a while now and that's not something you see all that much with the bigger projects they tend to release like interiors or all that but some of the recent pictures are like like really white uh like landscape uh yes screenshots. completely um i would definitely say we are probably one of the most public facing out of all of the uh, modding teams out there I and mean, there's no point having they were like we've coined the phrase like these wild west towns like if you have one of these centered like uh shot pieces where they just look fantastic yet if you would take 10 steps back you can see that there's nothing there there's no point doing that because it gives the community a full sense of where things are right. we like to show where things are like you might see in some of our pictures oh there's a square it's a block out building yes because we're an in development modding team we are just like the viewers we're just here we're just trying to make things and we don't it's a weird sort of relaxed intensity that we have going on you know we're not professionals yet we do have an end goal so we're just like you know come on the server we're like one of the lads we'll sit there we'll talk to you and we'll see how things are and that's why there are so many pictures coming out because we're not afraid to show where we're at no because it's quite funny to to think about it for a second because there are some mods out there i'm not going to name them but they really want to stay hidden almost from the public eye Yet you'd think if you're working on a project, you want to show it off. You want to get people excited for it. Like, can you give a reason why someone would like to do that? Um, do you mean in the sense that they don't want to go public with their mod? Or do you mean in the sense that they don't want to show off certain things? Uh, the, the first one, basically just trying to stay hidden from the world, stay hidden. Uh, they they, they want to, don't want to show anything about their mods at all so, until it's almost done i would them. definitely say it's it's a twofold answer to that question one is maybe they have nothing to show otherwise it might be because this is quite a ah uh, for a lack of a better word i'll just say toxic there is quite a lot of toxicity in the community i mean that goes for any game there are toxic communities all over in every game. Look, look at the Star Wars community. It's toxic oh, as hell. Yeah. I love Star Wars, but let's face it, like it's, it's pretty rough now. Yeah. Um, same here. And you, you have this sort of um, echo chamber effect where you get a lot of like people who believe they're elite um, and they all start to sort of band together. And if something new comes up, they just try and squash it like a bug. I don't know why, um, but... That seems to be the case. So for people wanting to hide away until they've got something to show, I can actually kind of understand that. Obviously, by the time I was on the project, because uh, I wasn't the original lead, um, but it was already out in the open. So I just had to take that mantle and run with it. In hindsight, would I maybe have wanted to stay a bit more hidden? Yeah, maybe. But I didn't have that choice. You know, let's you know, just keep going how it is and yeah. take the toxicity on the nose, I suppose. 
Yeah, because uh, uh, that's quite strange, because if you look at a game like Fallout 70, uh, 76, for example, players are often kind to each other, they help each other out, give play the new players stuff. Um, but that type of behavior doesn't reflect the Fallout community as a whole. Why do you think that is? I would suppose... I mean, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot here. I, I guess it is just to do with um, egos. Uh, all the project leads are in command of teams. And you need to try and prove your project is the best. Why is Fallout London better than some of the other mods, for example? Or why are those mods better than, say, Fallout London? So you need to have that sort of ego and that presentation to be like, we are the best. You should play our mod because it's better. I tr really, really, really try not to subscribe to that because at the end of the day, Fallout 4 is an old game now and we're just doing it for fun. Some people have that and that in itself, as I said, you get that echo chamber effect and then people are just like, oh, well, they said they don't like that mod. So yeah, now we don't like that mod. And then you, it just sort of builds and builds from there and it becomes like this sort of sewage pit. Um, I love the community, but um, yeah, some of you... Stop throwing mud would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's to me, it just seems like a waste. Like, I'm sure it is. things. It is. Yeah, like if people would just work together, uh, you know, things would get done faster and better. I, I think. I mean, but, uh, no, yeah. not to be the, the bleeding heart there Tuesday, but you know, if the world got together and yeah, worked exactly, together, exactly we'd be <laughs> we'd be in a much yeah. nicer place. That's just not how it works. I'm afraid. Yeah. Unfortunately not. Um, so let's go back a little bit. Of course, you're working on Fallout London. Yes. What is it that got you into modding in the in the first place? So my modding was literally, I've always been, I suppose I've always been a modder at heart. Um, I used to mod back on the Star Wars. On the, I've always been part of the modding scene. And the, one of the first things I ever modded, it was a mod that I modded, was Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy Movie Battles 2. Um, don't Google that, it was quite infamous there. Um, <laughs> but yes, that was something that I modded, and then from then I moved on to the Company of Heroes Europe at War, which was a mod again, and then I modded that. And then I finally came to the uh, Fallout. I tried Skyrim, but as I was sort of halfway through doing my mod that I was going to release, then uh, Fallout 4 came out and I was just sort of transferred over because I like the pew pew guns. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because as a kid I always enjoyed like playing with Lego and the like. I've always been a builder and that sort of stuff and it's just sort of transferred into video games. Right. Um, so you said you were working on, on Star Wars, was it? Like how long ago was this? Like how long have you been building oh. for? <laughs> out my age here. Um, uh, me oh. When did that game come out? My I must have been in college. Probably about 16, some 30 now. So, yeah, quick maths here. So yeah, it's been a, it's been about a, it's been a long while. Mm. Time. Yeah, it's been a very long time of uh, <laughs> doing mods for things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, have you also worked on other Fallout 4 mods except for Fallout Woman? Um, su surprisingly, I actually um applied originally to uh, join Fallout Miami. Uh, that was interesting. I think my uh. My post is uh, still up on one of their old blog spots. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Can't imagine I'll get accepted. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, not um, anymore, no. <laughs> but, but yeah. Um, yes, I, I've worked on a lot of smaller mods with uh, other people. Um, even the ones that we've released as standalones, there was my own input in there. Um, I don't think I've actually got any on my own Nexus account uh, because we've always um, had sort of the, the team input on yeah. things. I helped this one guy out with this, like, weird responding mod i don't know what that was but uh all oh, right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but my main focus has obviously been london yeah obviously i mean it would only make sense to yes um now one thing i find quite strange and uh something i've noticed is that people who make mods for fallout 4 they either don't play with mods or they don't play fallout 4 anymore at all is that also the case for you no, actually, um, I know exactly where you're coming from. Um, there are many people on this team where they're just mod, 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 and then they just never play the game. Uh, I personally think it's very important to play the game 
because it's what you're modding for. I think if you haven't played the game in, say, four years, and then it comes to releasing a mod, you've probably forgotten what the player experience is going to be like. Um, I have two setups. I have my very heavily modded game um, with oh so many mods, it crashes all the damn time. And then I've got my, obviously, Fallout London save file where I just do all the modding stuff there. Right. I, I think it's very important to be able to do both. Um, like, I'm an avid fan of uh, Sim Settlement, as well as, um, I mentioned it, I think, in the one of the other interviews, I'm a huge fan, and I'm, it's my only plug for someone else's mod, um, is The Machine and Her. It's one of the first mods I played where, well, I was actually streaming it on the Fallout London Discord, and people were sitting there, and you could have heard a pin drop. Everyone was just listening in, fantastic storytelling. If I can make Fallout London like that, mm, chef's kiss. Absolutely loved it. I've never played that mod. Was I even a Play it. For, Play for it. I will. No, though. no, I don't. I don't think you were back then. But uh, it must um, have been a while ago. Yeah, I uh, go and go and play it. Do it on <laughs> one of your Tuesday videos. Yes, go do yes, that. Yes, exactly. Do a mod review on it. Yes. Um, well, since you still play with mods, of course, do you still look on the Nexus quite frequently? Um, in terms of what, yes, I um, I do go on the Nexus quite frequently, um, but there hasn't actually been recently a lot that's tickled my fancy. To be fair, um, I tend to look for the the larger mods or the questing mods rather than yeah, the uh, right. um, hashtag uh, female mods, shall we say? Yeah, like so that's something like for the last month, I, I don't think anything really well, very interesting has come out. Like it's just. Uh, small stuff, it seems. I, I do need to excuse me one sec. I my, my monitor has broken. I can't see my computer screen. Oh no! <laughs> I think I've kicked my cable out. One sec. Okay. I can't see. <laughs> All right. Technical difficulties have been fixed. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> It's a hot day in England. My my Windows Seven PC decided to go to sleep. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were it's a warm about... day. I'm gonna have a nap halfway through the interview. Congrats. Yeah, exactly. I mean, is it? It's not uh, often that it's very warm in the UK. Like when people think of the UK, it's mostly like dark weather and rain. So I guess exactly. This, uh, this nice is surprise. one of the rare days. <laughs> so I hope you appreciate. On the one day it's gonna be hot this year, um, I'm indoors talking to you Tuesday. So. Right. Yeah, I'm not allowed to go outside. I'm in the isolation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we were talking about the Nexus, you still uh, visit it quite frequently. Yes. And uh, yeah, not a great deal of interesting stuff has come out recently. Uh, the only thing that we do see come out quite a lot are the, well, let's just say vast amount of 18 plus mods. Yes. Uh, can you give me your opinion on that? Um, yes, so... The current trend of what I would argue is Lover's Lab content is slightly frustrating, uh, which might seem a bit weird to hear. Um, you know, everyone's got their, their, their tastes. Um, I respect everyone's tastes. If you like that sort of thing, enjoy. But um, Lover's Lab used to be the place where if you wanted that sort of thing, that's where you went. It now seems that the Nexus, be it that they want money or they what's from the advertisement, they their standards have dropped considerably. In my this is my own opinion, not representative of the team. Um, and yeah, like there are just some strange 18 plus mods that are coming out, which I'm really surprised by. And I think with other modders who are putting the efforts into doing quest mods or weapon mods, I mean, there's, there's something else on weapon mods I'll add afterwards that. Yeah, they're just being pushed aside because people want to see a scantily clad woman appear at the top. To the stage where even when we've had to release weapons, unless a female is holding it, it just slips off the front page. No idea why. It just is the current trend. I know sex sells, but yeah, it's uh, it's getting a little bit uh, tacky, let's just say, on, on the next page because yeah, a, uh, a little bit out of hands this yeah point. there's there's a guy uh doc mobius uh who does fantastic fantastic level design uh for his uh cathedral project and every time it goes up within an hour gone because there's people taking pictures of their uh, females and posting it on the nexus 
I just yeah. wish they could segregate it. I know there's the, oh, you can turn off the adult content, blah, blah, blah. But the, the problem is that that doesn't give you a correct representation off the Nexus. You might be sitting there thinking, oh, I'm going to win mod of the month. Well, actually, you're not because there's five titty mods in front of you. So nice. maybe there should just be an adult section off the Nexus and a non-adult. I feel like that might be better. And what I was going to add on about the weapons, I feel that the current trend of these ported weapons is also a bit of an issue because there are some fantastic weapon makers out there. I believe you've even started your own foray in trying to make some weapons. And why bother going to that effort when you can just port something from another game? Like all these Call of Duty weapons coming across. Now, there is still skill involved in doing the porting, but... Why would you, you know, if you want to show off your weapon and you've spent months doing it, what's the point when you can just use something that already exists from Call of Duty? It's, uh, I feel like there's a current uh, negative trend on the Nexus, which is why I know lots of people are moving to Discord modding servers. Right. So how does that work? How does a, a, a Discord modding server work? Is that just some place where you can get mods and also like... Because I feel like a Discord modding server is also a way to get around... Uh, like illegal quote unquote mods. Yeah, I mean th that that's the part and parcel. That's the sort of the trade off, because there are a lot of um, people that are pushing for these Wabberjack style mods, which are just these mod packs, and the mod pack creator gets all of the donation points, any money that's generated through donations, all that sort of stuff. It goes to them, not the actual modder itself. This is as far as I'm aware, this is what I've been told. I, I don't really look at the web that thing. So people have been pulling their mods, moving to Discord. But then again, on the Discord, they then have some of the more unsavory mods on there. So it's part and parcel. I do feel something needs to happen one way or the other with the Nexus. Maybe what happens with Microsoft when they bring their changes in, we'll, we'll see that. But uh, until then, we're just going to have to go with the flow. I right. Yeah, because I remember when I was working on my Kong World Responders mod, I got a comment from someone saying like, oh, you can get deported Fallout 76 stuff from a Discord server. So if you want it, go and get it. But then again, I could never use it because it's not allowed. Exactly. Exactly. No no porting. Don't use ported stuff. It's, nah, it's, no, it's no. uh, it's a bad business. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, you are working. You're not only working. You're the lead of Fallout London. So I'll just ask some. Uh, Last time I checked, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't left yet due to no. uh, bad karma. No, not yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna ask you some uh, some FAQ of questions. Course. Of course. Will you play as the sole survivor, or will you be playing as a new character? A new character. We are not having the sole survivor in the mod. If anyone points to an old video that may have mentioned that, it's it's old information. You are not playing as the sole survivor in Fallout London. Does this new character have a name? He does. It is the Wayfarer. Uh, you'll find out more about that in a later uh, update from us, but it is the Wayfarer. We've only recently announced that as well. We kept that as a closely guarded secret. Yeah, because I think I only started hearing about that like a couple days ago. Like that was new. It's like, yes, oh, it's got yes. a name. That was our one <laughs> thing that we uh, scrolled away. We did that on purpose. Right. So yeah. Uh, will it be a voiced uh, character protagonist? Player? Easy for yeah, you to say. Um, a voice protagonist? No, no, we won't. We have chosen not to go to the voice protagonist route. It allows us more options. It also allows us not to have two voice actors, because obviously you need male and female right. to voice, what, 25,000 lines or something. So it will be a non-voice protagonist. It also allows people to roleplay better, I feel. Yeah, I mean, you can always, uh, like with dialogue, you can just put in what you want to put in. You don't have to take in account what, like, you can only say stuff that has been said in vanilla that way. Yeah, which exactly. Makes it, yeah, you have way more creative freedom that way, I feel like. Exactly, you are completely correct. So, uh, in terms of map size, is it about vanilla Fallout 4 map, or is it more Far Harbor size? So, our map is divided up into boroughs. Some of those boroughs act as almost like how Diamond City does. If you were to go through them, it goes off into its own world space. Right. If you were to sort of mush them all together, um, our mod is probably about as large as vanilla, if not arguably slightly bigger. 
but for semantic sake, the size of the vanilla Fallout 4 experience. So you're talking about boroughs. So basically, you have all these pieces of London that are separated from each other. I guess it has to do with optimization. Yes. How would you go from one to another? Is it just a load door or how does that work? That you'll have to see in game. So some is very obvious where you'll just be able to sort of walk from A to B. Some will have a load door that you go in, but some of them are a bit special. That one you'll have to see. Right, okay. Uh, so story-wise, because there's a big story in play, how long roughly will it take the player to complete it? Again, much like the vanilla Fallout 4 experience, we are trying to keep toe-to-toe -to -toe with that game's pacing. We have the team that can do it, they've already started doing some of it, um, and yeah, we don't want it to drag on for too long, you don't want it to be way too short. But ultimately, the biggest goal is getting it done. So, we are going to aim for a round of very similar experience, because people need to stop seeing Fallout London as a DLC. It's basically like a new game, maybe Fallout 4.5, like something to get you in between the, the next release. So, it'll be of a large size like that. Yeah. Uh, now, all of these questions about Fallout London are the frequently asked questions. What would you say is the most asked question that you get about Fallout London? Is there going to be a Lee Enfield? <laughs> um, <laughs> is yes. it still? Yes. There's going to be a Lee Enfield. Uh, what's the other one? Um, is there a Doctor Who reference? Yes. Yes, there's uh, a Doctor Who reference. Yeah. There, there are two main ones. Doctor Who and the Lee Enfield. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes to both. <laughs> yes to both. All right. Yeah. Um, now, I'm going to ask you some more personal questions about uh, how you are running the mod. A lot of people I know and have talked to have worked on their own personal mods. Some are small, some are quite big. Uh, some are even, in fact, a bit on par with Fallout London. Can you tell me something you like and something you dislike about running such a big mod project such as Fallout London? Something I like and dislike. Something I love is the ability to actually interact with the community. Uh, as much as many people may feel that I hate it, especially if they've spoken to me, um, I'm perhaps not the friendliest in the public chat, but at the end of the day, like I'm a gamer and I do this to create a game for the community. So it's that interaction that I love. When, when they give us feedback, I, you know, like, yes, I can't stand being asked, will there be Lee Enfield? It's because they're interested and they want to use something in our mod. You know, if you cut away the fact, yes, it's slightly annoying, it is because they have an interest. And the fact that I've given people an interest, something to look forward to, I really, really love that. Uh, something I dislike is... is probably also the the uh, the community. Um, <laughs> it's weird, <laughs> it's a very double-edged sword. Uh, when I say the community, I don't necessarily mean the people that want to play. I mean... As I mentioned before, some, some of the, uh, the the other team uh, correspondence and how things work, yeah. uh, because there there are many people that come up with ideas and they're like, "Hey, I've got this great new mod idea and it's great." Unfortunately, maybe they don't have the skill set to get it to completion, and I, I was definitely someone that felt like this at the very start was that you feel like you know everything. And it does take being humbled to then realize, maybe I need to shut up and listen to the people that have more experience. And maybe I still struggle with that now and again, let's face it. But, you know, it's about learning. And uh, the problem is a lot of these smaller projects, they do tend to just put their walls up. Oh, no. Fallout London's coming. Some of the other mods are coming. Oh, no. What do I do? I'm just going to ignore everything they say because I am right. Yeah, right. maybe they've never even opened the creation kit, and yet they're the project lead. You know, yeah, exactly. Like, like you know, no lower the walls, to make listen <laughs> to more experience. You know, and I would definitely say that if people did that, there'd be a higher chance of mods succeeding, because maybe they just need to scale it down slightly to get what they want. And even if not that, maybe they could put their skill sets and ideas and just join another modding team, or maybe they would just be told actually you're looking at another seven years can you commit to that maybe they should just say no i can't there and then rather than have this stubborn pride which then leads them to have a discord server everyone joins and then year down the line when they've still got pens and paper in their hands 
that they scrap because that actually affects the rest of us. Every small mod that starts advertising and advertising that then fizzles out, people lose faith. We saw that with one of these huge mods that come out recently that has really tarnished the modding community and it's a shame because we've now got to rebuild those bridges with the community so you guys can all trust us again. It's it's quite tough. Right, yeah. What would you say is the most difficult about running a project that is this big? I would say the fact that it is obviously a free project. You, There can only be so much you can badger someone to do work because you're actually not their boss. You're a man or woman on the discord you know you're you're not paying these people it's all free time yes they have a job to do but you've got to manage all these different time zone you've got to make sure work's getting done and if something's not done right you know you need to try and work with them to make sure it is done right if you just sit there with a hard fist going do it this way do it by then do it now this is their hobby if they don't enjoy the hobby they're just going to leave right. so you know, it's man managing the team as well. Is it's it's fun, but it definitely has its challenges. Yeah, because there are some uh, projects out there that do kind of rule their community with a with a tighter fist, I guess you could say. But in London, it is quite loose. Like you, you're just a bunch of friends working on a project. Is that so, or is yeah. it still? Uh... Ev everyone is is friends on the project and. You know, there are definitely people that you work with that you may not get on with, but we, we have this uh, ability to just just all get along, I feel. And like it's more like a family than a mod project at this point. You know, we, we have plans to all meet up um, and, and that'd be great to like to actually see like, you know, faces to the people like we often actually sit there on webcam and stuff. It's just like a group of mates that are just making something they enjoy and that really take some of the strain off it. It doesn't take it off my shoulders, but it takes the strain <laughs> off other people. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just a continuous strain on your shoulders running the project. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bad back from carrying this team. I tell right. you, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, as of now, there are like three big projects that are being worked on, which are all quite well known, which are Fallout Miami, Fallout Cascadia, and Fallout London. For some reason, there's quite much hostility going on between the three. Like you said, people are putting their walls up. There's a bit of ego going on. Are there any other reasons why uh, the three or the big three just have trouble just getting along with each other? I think you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, I, I won't speak on behalf of the other projects, but I, I definitely feel there is this element of elitism and... Uh, ego involved um it's, it's interesting because you know it's so flip floppy as well um what one minute we're all enemies then we all speak to each other in voice chat it's it's, it's just weird it's uh it's a very interesting dynamic i'll say that much um i just wish there was less wars less fighting yeah. you know there doesn't need to be border sk skirmishes easy for me to say there doesn't need to be as many but uh, blah, blah, blah. yes <laughs> i can't finish that <laughs> sentence yeah, because we should all get along. Come by our moments. Yeah. yeah, because just the other day I was there with uh, with you. We were all in the Fallout Miami uh, Discord, just talking to each other, and everything just went fine. It was just a yeah. good time. Yeah, great time with that with the guys over there. Actually, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, so like you said, it's very flip floppy for uh, for some reason. The other one moment it all goes fine, another moment just goes all to shit again. <laughs> I, I wonder if uh, the whole lockdown thing. Like, a lot of people, especially in England, that we've all been stuck inside for a year now. Um, people are bored, I guess. You know, drama's yeah. interesting. I suppose. Who knows? Yeah, I'm very sure it is that way. Like, it definitely contributes to that fact. Uh. Let's see, of course, the most recent big project that got released for the Frontier, which quickly oh. became, well, not uh, as uh, good as people hoped it, it, it was because of disturbing content. Uh, did any of this stuff affect Fallout London? So we've got a head writer who is winning awards left right and center at the moment and we have a creative director that has made this story basically bulletproof 
combined, we have a story that doesn't have sex lizards in it. So, uh, Fallout London, it doesn't have anything story-wise that was kind of on the edge, so to say, that needs no. to be changed. No, we had some bits which were British humour that may not have gone over so well overseas. And even that was just dialed down. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be this very vanilla, blamongy experience where, like, not much happens. Like, there's shades of beige and grey everywhere. There will be some bits which are a bit hard-hitting, but it won't be as on the nose as I think there was, uh, if, if you were going to any reference on the frontier, I believe there was, like, an MXR quest line. Now, right, right. that was that was one of the things that gave me the most issue because that's just law-breaking. Like, you've just named another YouTuber in the mod. Like, if someone's trying to do something law-worthy... Why are you now searching for, I believe it was MXR's titty stash or something? Like, well, how is how does that fit <laughs> in the law? Like, you know, that sort of stuff. No, we have nothing like that. No. No, because one thing they also say about Fall of the Frontier is that at one point, the lead just didn't know what was being put in at that at that point. Has this also been the case for London that you well, didn't know what uh, or you found stuff that was in it? That you didn't know about, and uh, didn't maybe not in a way that uh, you found something that needed to be removed, but just that you found something at all that you didn't know about. Well, we actually asked that question. I say we as a collective because we're a team. Uh, we asked that question to, uh, I believe it's TG Spy during his interview um, about how does a project lead not know about this content and i think the question was uh, forgive me it's been a while it was a question like do you even not know or not care and there was a, a long pause in that answer which was worrying that it took that long to come up with an answer i know everything that is in this mod and if anything is not perceived well i will wear that as my job as the project lead it's how it should be and you know, people shouldn't be running around putting things in left, right and center that I don't know about. That's not how you run a project. You know what goes on and you know what the content is and it gets screened. Otherwise, you end up with the situations that you've explained. All right. I don't have any further questions. Are there any things that you want to get off your mind before we wrap this up? Obviously, I just want to say a huge thanks to my team. Like, they've been putting in such a hard graft, especially during this pandemic. I couldn't ask for a better team. I'd also say, like, for the community, come and join us on Discord. We're always sitting in public chat. You can come and talk to us. You'll realize how weird we all are. We're, we're weird and wonderful. But, um, yeah, the Discord's definitely the place to be. Um, I'm quite leaky, so if you just come and ask me, I'll probably say something that I'm not supposed to, and the writing team will get me in the neck for it. But it's definitely the place to be. Uh, make sure you put that Discord down below because those people need to come there because that's where all the fun Obviously, stuff happens. Obviously, yeah, we'll put yeah. all, the, all the links down below. Um, all right, well, thank you for uh, talking to me about the whole modding scene and Fallout London, of course. I hope you uh, had a good time as well. Yes, I no, I, I had a great time. It's, it's nice to actually chat to you a bit more than just through our small banter that we have with your right. yeah, more responders than just memes. mod. But yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, an absolutely fantastic time. And uh, yeah, good luck with your uh, other projects that I know you're working on. Yes, yes, we'll uh, we'll definitely do that. Well, okay. Uh, well, thank you again. I hope the people that are watching this had a good time as well. If you did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe for more interviews. I also subscribe to us too and subscribe to follow London. <laughs> they have their own youtube channel as well also link down below in the description and uh, if you want to help out the channel you can do so by becoming a patreon other than that thank you all for watching my name is tuesday and i will see you all next time simp